The key words to understand are importance and urgency. Importance and urgency. Importance basically comes from within you. Importance is your value system, hopefully based upon principles. Importance is your mission, your central strategy to accomplish those high priority goals and plans to implement that strategy. Urgent comes from the environment. It presses upon you. It's proximate. It's right in front of you. It's often very popular. It could be deep into a social value system. You have to decide what is truly important. That's why I asked you. Notice the question. What are the most important things to you? And then, what are the single activities that you know without any question by doing those consistently, superbly well, would accomplish marvelous results. So you've identified what's important. We call this a time management matrix. There are four quadrants. Now, quadrant one, you'll notice, is both urgent and important. It's like that important client that is contacting Elizabeth in her international consulting business. But it's not at a convenient time but it's a pressing need on the part of that client. Quadrant one. She needs to attend to it. It's important. It's also urgent. Quadrant one is where you tend to move toward crisis, toward problems. If you're not in that meeting, you'll have a problem. So it's a quadrant one. You have to be in that meeting. So it's either a present problem or a problem in the making if you neglect it. Quadrant two is not urgent, but it is important. Prevention, preparation, planning, relationship building, empowerment, sharpening the saw, self-development, setting up mission statements. Quadrant two is the leadership quadrant. Quadrant three is not important, but it is urgent. Those things that are pressing, sometimes even popular, proximate, right in front of you but not important. And four is neither urgent nor important. That would be symbolized by these small rocks, these green pebbles. All right, now, look at your paper. Look at your answers to those two questions. What quadrant were those answers in? What would you say? One activity that you know would produce marvelous results. Yes, sir, what did you have down? What quadrant? Quadrant two. Now, why isn't it one? Because you're not now doing it. It's not urgent. The low urgency need. When we're driven by the urgent, when we are addicted to the urgent, it drives us into what quadrants? One and three. In fact, you examine most executive agendas against the four quadrants, and you'll find almost all of them are one and three. Two is usually called other business. What happens then to two? It gets pushed aside. Two represents the big rocks. They're pushed aside. Now what happens to one? It gets larger. How long can you sustain quadrant one lifestyle? Doesn't it soon beat you up? Doesn't it burn you out eventually? How many have felt burned out by quadrant one? Managing fires, the pounding surf, mending fences. Eventually it takes its toll on your body, on your mind. But then the dilemma is faced. Where do you get time for quadrant two? when you're inundated by quadrant one, things that are both important and urgent. You neglect quadrants three and four. You literally say no. Four isn't difficult. One of the reasons people move to four is because they are so beat up by one. So four is essentially wasted anyway. Then the key is to take it from three. Those things that are pressing, 
sometimes even popular, proximate, right in front of you, but not important, to say no to them. Goethe taught, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. You can do this kind of work, this quadrant two work, when there is a burning yes inside you about the mission and the purpose and the value system. You can say no to all kinds of unimportant, however urgent other things may be. People will begin to see you differently. They won't just come and throw quadrant three things to you all the time, like I did one time to one of the managers who reported to me. Yeah, it's really urgent, but it was obviously quadrant three from his point of view. He said, sure, I'll work on it if you want. Pulled down his project board. I saw all the projects, deadline dates, how far he'd gone. I realized I'm dealing with someone who has purpose and organization here. I'm not going to mess up this person's life and get involved in reordering this system. So I said, well, I'll find somebody else, and I threw it to another crisis manager. <laughs> now, what if it's your boss? that gives you a quadrant three project. By definition, what does that make it? One. <laughs> what is important to another person must be as important to you as the other person is to you. That's why most of you put down on your first things first list your relationships with your loved ones, your family. I know you did. I'll bet there's not an exception in this entire room. There's also not an exception in this room that the things you wrote down under the last two questions are all quadrant two. Preparation, prevention, values clarification, planning, relationship building, true recreation or empowerment. Now notice all of those have to do with relationships, either with self or preparing toward future relationships or the rebuilding of relationships. All seven habits are in quadrant two. All seven of them. Habit one, to be proactive. You have to be proactive to act on quadrant two. Why? Quadrants one and three, what? Act on you. So you just react to them. You have to be proactive to act on quadrant two. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Why would that be quadrant two? It's not urgent to develop a mission statement or a clear sense of what this day, this week, this month, or these goals under each role is, see? Nothing's pressing me to do that. You are proacting the writing of those programs. Habit three is where quadrant two is taught. Habits four, five, and six is the process of involving other people in a communication process in moving toward synergistically solving problems. That means come up with solutions that are better. And habit seven, sharpening the saws, the renewal habit, obviously, is quadrant two activity. Seriously, people that start to think in quadrant two ways will gradually change their job, their environment. Now they have to be wise and sensitive, but they're proactive. They're doing things to make things happen. They have become a force of nature. That's quadrant two thinking. Mm -hmm.